What's up guys? Welcome to The Smart Student. My name is Chelsea Seaburn. Today's video, I'm excited you're here because we're gonna talk about two topics that I discuss quite frequently on this channel, but I wanna talk about them side by side because quite frankly, these topics are linked together and I think for your understanding, it's really important to have them side by side. And that is talking about referencing and in-text citations. Because if you're most college students out there, you're writing an APA formatting and you know you need to create reference list entries and in-text citations and both of those topics are fairly complex so let's start with the relationship between the two how are they linked why do you need to use them well basically when you're writing academic papers aka scientific based aka research based you're using information you find from other people you're using their ideas their words their thoughts what have you and you're paraphrasing it or you're directly quoting it in your papers. In order to do so, you need to make sure you credit where you originally found that information. So the way you credit an original source is by creating a reference list entry. Now, that's step one, because when you're writing your paper, you also need to indicate where that material came from there as well. Otherwise, how would anyone know where what came from where? But to summarize, the relationship between a reference list entry and an in-text citation is that the in-text citation links the material in your paper to the reference list entry at the end of your paper, which will link to the original source where you found that information from. With that understanding, now let's jump into my laptop where we're gonna go through templates and examples so you'll really, really understand this. All right, come with me. Woohoo, we're here. All right, we're gonna dive right into this tutorial because at this point, you understand the relationship between the reference list entry and the in-text citation. Now we need to discuss what this looks like in action. So when you're out there writing your paper, what do you actually need to do in order to link these two items together? And yes, note that the document is color coordinated because this is gonna help with your understanding, I promise. Okay, the first thing we need to understand is a reference list entry, more specifically, the four elements of a reference. So these are the four items that you need to include in your reference list entries for it to be considered correct and complete. But what those four elements are is the author, the date, the title, and the source. So as you can see in the real life example, you have all of those four elements present Yay, you have properly and adequately cited this source, you've credited the author, but you're not quite done yet because when you're writing your paper and you include material from another source, you need to make sure you credit them in your paper as you have in your reference list. So this is where the in-text citations come in. And quite frankly, all in-text citations will always have two elements present. You have the author and the date and now if you're wondering why only those two elements and not the four, first of all, if you included all four, that would clutter up, muddy up your paper quite a bit. And number two, if you have the author and the date, that makes it very easy to go down to the reference list entry and spot which reference that material belongs to because that's the first two items you're going to see. Now, every once in a while, you'll need to include a third element, which is the source locator. And the source locator, if you note, is blue because it corresponds with the source type. So in this example, para 9, that stands for paragraph 9. So this might be an online article, and they're referring to the paragraph. If it were a YouTube video or a podcast, you'd use the timestamp. But with that, we know how to link these two together. Next, which is already kind of alluded to here, let's discuss the two different types of written material that require a citation. That is paraphrase material and material that is directly quoted. Paraphrase material, this is when you're expressing another author's ideas, but you're writing them in your own words. And quite frankly, this should account for 98% of citable material. In other words, directly, direct quotes should be used sparingly because this is when you're using another person's words verbatim. And verbatim is the key word here because in order to directly quote somebody, you have to leave it as you found it. The words have to stay exactly as they are. Otherwise, you need to paraphrase correctly or you're going to miss some points. All right. The last thing is let's discuss the two delivery options you have for this. In other words, you have a choice on how you format both paraphrase material and directly quoted material. 
and that is through either a parenthetical or a narrative citation. And the gist is that they're exactly what they sound like. A parenthetical citation is when you enclose the elements for the in-text citation in parentheses, like you see it is here. For a narrative citation, you're simply going to incorporate the elements into the structure of the sentence, generally something as you see it is in this example. You would include the author's last name into the sentence structure, followed by the date enclosed in parentheses. Now, if it's a direct quote, you're gonna follow these same principles. However, you're gonna be formatting per a direct quote, meaning you're going to include the direct quote in double quotations to signify this. So if this were a parenthetical citation, as you can see, you have that third element, but the rest stays the same. You have the elements enclosed in parentheses at the end of the sentence, and moving down to the narrative citation, the only thing that's different here is that a direct quote that's using a narrative citation, APA asks that you include the source locator at the end of the sentence enclosed in parentheses, simply so it doesn't distract from the structure of the sentence. And we're back. All right, I hope that helped with your understanding. Let me know down in the description if it was helpful. And by the way, if APA formatting, specifically referencing and citation creating is something you struggle with, I now have a live workshop specifically on this topic called APA Made Easy, where I'm gonna hop on camera live, hang out with you guys for roughly 45 minutes to an hour. I'm gonna make this crystal clear for you so your life is so much easier when you're out there writing those academic papers, hopefully getting all A's. If you'd like to find a date and time that works for your schedule, there's a link somewhere up here and one down in the description below. I have a lot of dates and times, especially coming up in the next few months. So be sure to check that and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.